thank you. Good morning to you all. Thank you, Bishop Wright. He has been one of the main leaders of the repeal effort in the state over the last two years. And we really appreciate very much Bishop Wright's leadership and the leadership of all the clergy. And I know many of you have signed on to this effort. You're on our website. You're reaching out to your congregants and helping them to understand the issue, urging them to action, and I continue, I, I ask you to continue to do that. It is critically important. As the bishop said, Senate Bill 19, the bill to repeal the death penalty, is through the Senate, and right now it's stuck in the House Judiciary Committee. Um, we believe that if it were to get to the floor for a House vote, that we would be able to pass the bill. Um, but we need to get it out of the committee. And we also believe that we have two-thirds of the Democratic caucus in the House in support of the repeal of the death penalty. So that means that there are few recalcitrant Democrats and Republicans as well, but the Democrats are in control of the House of Representatives, right? They're in the leadership. The governor's a Democrat, the Senate's in the Democratic control. So we are talking about Democratic co uh, politicians here, right? Two thirds of the caucus support the repeal of the death penalty. There is no reason why this bill should be bottled up in committee and not be brought to the floor for a full debate and a fair vote. And that's all we're asking for. We're saying Senate Bill 19 deserves a vote. I urge every one of you to talk to your congregants if they support the repeal have them call their legislators. Whether the legislator supports the repeal or does not support the repeal, they need to hear from everyone in their district. Uh, because the more pressure we can put on everybody, those that support and those that oppose, the more they'll speak up in caucus, the more they'll put pressure on the leadership and quite frankly the governor to take some action this year in 2014. Um, as you know, it's an election year. So by November 2014, uh, already legislators, I've been working for, with legislators for over 10 years. They're some of the biggest scaredy cats that you'll ever want to meet in the whole world. If, if they think that this might affect their chance for re-election, then they're going to try to avoid the issue as best they can. Um, let me tell you that we have done statewide polling, and we have done polling in individual targeted legislative districts. And you can assure your elected officials that if they are in Newcastle County, if they have anywhere between 15 and 30 percent African American folks in their district, and if they have a majority Democratic district, this is not only a safe vote for them, it's an important vote for them to take to say yes on repeal. because. Democratic primary voters overwhelmingly support repeal. African American voters overwhelmingly support repeal. Um, in general, 64% of all Delawareans support alternatives to the death penalty. They support life without life in prison, life in prison without parole, life in prison without parole, and restitution to the victims' families. Only 28% of folks in Delaware support the death penalty when they're given alternatives. So I know that politicians are afraid and I know that our elected officials are worried about getting reelected. But believe me, the numbers are on our side and the moral arguments are on our side and the facts are on our side. And so if you need any information whatsoever, please go to our website at www.derepeal.org. Um, there's information there. You can sign up for our clergy <coughs> sign-on letter. You can sign up for um, email alerts. You can get contact information there where you can email the campaign coordinators and uh, call us. Any assistance, we will come in and do what we call Abolition Sundays. We will bring materials. We will bring speakers. We will help you educate your congregants. Um, social justice committees, we work closely with social justice committees. Um, small groups, large groups, we don't care. We want to talk to everybody. So please call us, contact us, let us help you 
educate your congregants, organize and mobilize your congregants because we would really like to do this and to make, to be successful in 2014, we really need to get this through the House of Representatives before Easter, before the Easter break. And I think that's a laudable goal for us. So now I would just very briefly like to introduce a friend of mine, Juan Melendez. And I worked with Juan, I worked on the repeal of the death penalty issue in the state of New Mexico for um, over seven years. And after a nine and a half year campaign, New Mexico did abolish the death penalty in 2009. And Juan and I worked very closely um, traveling around the state, talking to groups of all sizes. And um, it's great for him and 14 other of his colleagues from Witness to Innocence uh, to be in Delaware this weekend. Okay, so this is the first time this has happened. Witness to Innocence is an organization of men and women that have been exonerated for death from death rows in the country. Right now, since 1976, over 143 people have been exonerated for death, from death rows in 26 states. That's one person exonerated for every 10 executions. That's a pretty high mistake rate, if you ask me. Juan was in, uh, on death row in Florida for over 18 years for a murder that he did not commit. And I'd like him to just speak with you um, very briefly today. Thank you very much for your support and your attention. Thank you, thank you. My name is Juan Roberto Melendez. I'm the number 99 person in the nation to be released from their role because of issues of innocence. But my story is not that old unique. Just like Daddy said, it's been 143, it's been 1,300 1, and plus execution. Many of them in the state of Texas. They are real cowboys down there. <laughs> and I suffered terribly. When I went to Deborah, I did not know how to read, I did not know how to write, I did not know how to speak English. Guess who teach me? The worst of the worst. The most indesirable people in the nation. They wanted some procedure called monsters to this Puerto Rican. How to read, how to write, how to speak English. In such a stand, they also told me how to let hate and anger go. I suffer a lot with my family, especially my mama and my five aunts. I believe they suffer more than I did. I remember a letter that my mama wrote me. In that letter she said, son, I just built an altar. In that altar, I put the statue of the Virgin of the Guadalupe in it. And I call roses, and I put it in it. And I pray three rosaries a day, thinking, searching for a miracle. And that miracle will come soon because I know you're innocent. And God knows that you're innocent. All you got to do is put all your trust in God. And one day, he will send you free. 17 years, eight months, and one day later, that miracle came true. Thank God for that. But it took too long, God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I suffered, uh, 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 but I did not realize how much my mama suffered after I'd been out. I went to her room and and I noticed that tear was rolling down her cheeks. And I said, Mama, what's wrong? And she said, Son, in spite of all that faith that I have in God and the vision of the Guadalupe, for all them years, for all them long, long years, I was saving money to bring your body back if the state of Florida and in burial in, in Puerto Rico, if the state of Florida would have to sit execute you. And no mother in this world should go to that pain. So my advice is, I encourage you to, 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 to speak to you, to, you, to you House representatives, to keep this bill in the floor for a full vote. It's a life and death situation. It deserves a full vote from, from, from all the House representatives. So I'll leave you with that. God bless you, and I love you all. Uh, you, uh, thank you for being here, Kathleen. Thank you for the work you're doing. As he was speaking, you can't see what's written on the back of his shirt uh, as I could when he was speaking. But as a final thought, 
let me leave this with you. This is what it says. You can release an innocent man from prison, but you can't release him from his grave. Thank you.